5 a.m. Portsmouth. Immigration officer Peter Campbell is briefing a joint team of police and immigration staff. Their target is a plastics factory in Southampton where they believe foreign nationals are being employed as illegal workers. So, very simple, when we get in the premises, we've got six interviewing officers, they will be conducting the interviews, everybody else is there in a cover role. So if the interview officers could just remain here and the rest of you go and find your vehicles. 30 officers are on this operation, sourced from different enforcement teams across southern England. It's a big factory, the immigration team don't want to take any risks. The premises has never been visited, but um, it's been on the cards for the last about year and a half. As um, the intel is very good for it, but it's logistics-wise, it's a big job, so it's, it's getting the staff for it really. I think there's going to be quite a lot of people to deal with. So we've got about six officers who are going to be interviewing. Then everybody else is going to be in a cover role today, so that'll be that'll be my role just uh, to be where I'm needed really. Right here. Stop here! Stop here! Stop. The first stage of the mission is to seal off the escape routes. The teams split up. One group surrounds the perimeter. That's clear. As another moves inside the factory. Guys from immigration, can you come over? Everyone is a suspect, so all the workers are quickly rounded up. With the entire workforce together, the team sets up a safe zone where the interviews will take place. At the moment, we're just trying to contain the area, um, get everybody um, who's on the premises into a sterile area. So at the moment, we're just trying to cover everybody until we get ourselves set up to interview everybody. We didn't lose anybody, nobody escaped or anything, so yeah, it was good. We went quite smoothly. We've just got to do the rest of it now. OK, what's your name? S6 at the moment. S6. Do you want to write it for me there? So that's Satnam Singh, yeah? Yeah. And you're Indian? Yes. And how long have you been in the UK? Huh? How long have you been in the UK? 96. You came in 96? Yeah. And what's your entitlement to be here? Sorry? What's your entitlement to be here? 96, yeah. Yeah, I know you came in 96. How did you come in 96? 96 in the land, I mean. Yeah. You flew in in 96, did you? Yeah. Have you got a visa? Yeah. Work permit? Yeah. When did you get that? Uh, my home. <laughs> my car. Where's your passport now? This is my passport. My house. At your house? Yeah. Right, so how long was your visa for? Me? In 96, yeah. Yeah, but are, are you here legally now? I'm illegal. No, are you? I'm 96. Yeah, work here. 96, yeah. Officer Jones isn't getting any clear answers, and neither is Officer Jody Dedman. What language do you speak? The man claims to be Greek, but says he can speak a little Punjabi. He's got a Greek passport. He's in Greece. Yeah, Istro. It's Istro. Well, so you're telling me that you're you've got a Greece. Greek passport. Why, why did you send it back to Greece? Okay, he sent it back for renewal. It's going to be stamped again to be renewed. So how 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 am I going to believe that you're a Greek national when you can prove that you, you can't show me that you're a Greek national? He said he can he can get the passport back. He can get a photocopy of the passport back. Uh, within 10, 15 days. Well, no, I need it now. Basically, what he's, he's stated to me is that um, he's a Greek national, but he, um, which means he's a European national and he doesn't need a visa um, to, to... He can basically live freely and work freely in the United Kingdom. The problem we have is he has no identification to prove that to me. Yeah, yeah. Right, what do you want me to do with him, then? We haven't arrested him. Don't pull out for a former yet. I need to pull out if you're going to arrest him. Oh, right, OK. Um, where's, your, where's your documents? 
Yeah, he doesn't like yeah, you, you speak English. <laughs> yes, you do. Stop lying to me. Where are your documents? <laughs> Nick on suspicion. Right, OK. Right, OK. Officer Campbell has ordered the first arrest, and with 45 people still to be interviewed, there could be many more. The slums in Lagos, Nigeria, plagued by violence, power cuts, and poverty. The product of a city in the middle of the largest population boom of the 21st century. Lagos is one of the largest cities in Africa. Ties to the UK are close, and for many in search of a better life, Britain is their number one destination. Here at the British Deputy High Commission, 110,000 visa applications are assessed each year, and the decisions on who to let into the UK made by 34 UK border agency officers. I've had a very quick look at this case. And um, the first thing I noticed is that the marriage certificate is not genuine. On the basis of that, this application is going to be refused. This is the man who's just been declined for submitting false documents. They say I should appeal for the refusal. Yeah, I know that if I appeal, I'll go to the UK. The Home Office will impose a 10-year ban if he applies for another visa. But with almost 10,000 fraudulent documents detected in 2008 alone, the police do not have the resources to arrest him. Not all cases are so straightforward. Some applicants are asked to go to the Deputy High Commission to be interviewed by an entry clearance officer. This man has been called in because he was arrested in the UK in spring 2009, yet the stamp in his Nigerian passport says he had already returned to Nigeria. He'll be interviewed by Officer Phil Morgan. Now the next case we have is a family visitor. Uh, he has come to the attention of the police in the UK in March of this year, 2009. And when we look through the entry stamps back into Nigeria, the last entry into Nigeria that he has is on the 12th of November 2008. Now my guess is he's maybe paid somebody uh, to wind back the stamp to show him entering Nigeria before the expiry conditions of his last UK visa, which expired on the 7th of December 2008. If the man wants a visa, he'll have to explain how he got his passport stamped when he was clearly still in the UK. Morning. Right. I need to ask you some questions about your current application, OK? OK. What do you do for a living? At the moment, I'm a farmer. You're a farmer? Yes, please. A farmer in what? Uh, in poultry, fishery and pig. And are you married? Yeah, happily married. And uh, how many children do you have? Two able boys. Two sons? Yes, miss. Okay. My gene is for boys, so I don't <clears> want to go further. <laughs> I noticed from your passport that yeah. you last entered the UK on the 28th of October. October, yeah. yeah. And how long did you stay? Uh, I stayed almost five months. Five months? Yeah, almost. So when did you return to Nigeria? March 21. Sorry? March 21. But your visa expired on the... S is it? Your visa expired on the 7th of December, December 2008. Yeah. yeah. So you breached your conditions? No, something terrible happened. Tell me what happened. Yeah, <clears throat> the last time I traveled, October 27, I traveled with a cousin of mine. His name is Akin Remy Adetola. Yeah. Yeah, we, we were to come back on the 12th of the November, but I changed my mind to stay five more days. Yeah, so what was the terrible thing that happened then? Yeah, uh, while he was coming back, he came back with my jacket. My jacket. Hmm. And my passport and ticket was in my jacket. 
Yes. When he tendered the passport for stamping at the immigration office here, and you know what applies here is, you'll be on the queue, two people will be sitting down. You give your passport to the first person, he send it to the next person to stamp, then the next person that stamp will call you when he wants to hand over it to you. So by the point of handing over, they discover it's not the owner of the passport, and my passport was withheld. Does your cousin look anything like you then? Not really, not really. Not really? Yeah. So the Nigerian immigration officer didn't look at the bio data page and compare the photographs with your at cousin? At the point of delivery, that was when they compared. But they've already done the stuff. That's very good, thank you. I need to refer to my entry clearance manager, okay? okay. If you wait outside, please. Yeah, I just want to add that why I had to stay long was because of that issue and it took me three months to, uh, to get emergency travel certificate. That was, in fact, that was so devastating. To apply for emergency travel certificate in Nigeria Embassy it took three months while well, I have a lot of things to do here. I have social engagement to attend, I have my business meeting to attend, I have so many things to attend. But it's an emergency travel document, surely, that's, that's but <laughs> they're issued within 24 hours. That's why I'm surprised. You need to see the crowd, I need to go through the website to download. After downloading, you need to be giving interview date three months. It's so disgusting. That's my area of problem with that. But as I said, I need to refer the case to the entry yeah, clearance fine. manager. So that's if you'd fine. like to wait outside, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, he's uh, attempted to explain why the re-entry stamp shows the 21st of November. He says that his cousin took his passport back to Nigeria with him and got the Nigerian Immigration Service to stamp that. I don't find that very credible myself. <laughs> I've been honest enough to them. Uh, I don't think I should lie over any questions. I've told them the absolute truth of what happened. And uh, I don't live in the UK. I only go and visit. Uh, I don't see any reason why they should not allow me to go anymore. <laughs> 2,500 miles away, and Officer Dave Jones is still attempting to get answers from his interviewee. Right, to start work here, the person that gave you the job, you would have to show him something so to say that you was legally here in the United Kingdom and you was entitled to work. So what did you show him? Oh, you have a card. You've got a, you've got a national insurance card? Yeah. Where's that? OK, show me. Yes. Yeah. Where did you get this from? My solicitor. Your solicitor? Yeah. Your solicitor gave you this? Can you Why are you entitled to be here and work? Who gave you permission to be here and work? Yeah, it was long time job here, I'm in text pay everything. Officer Jones will now check his immigration status on the Home Office database. OK. So, he came when, sorry, Trace? December. Is he, is he Fez? Yeah. Lovely, cheers. Now listen, you're in the United Kingdom illegally, and you're not entitled to work. Oh, right, OK, mate. Sorry. OK? You know that, though, don't you? Huh? You, you know that, don't you? You know you're not entitled to work, and you know you're here illegally, don't you? OK. This chap actually arrived in the United Kingdom uh, in December 98, and he was arrested and served as an illegal entrant a document of use. Um, he then absconded, and he's been an absconder ever since. He did claim asylum, um, it's failed, um, but he's been an absconder since 98, so he'll be going down the station and um, he'll be processed from there. I've already cautioned you, but you're under arrest for being in this country illegally and working illegally, all right? I'll let you know what's going to happen to you in a minute. Yeah. It's just illegal entry. It's been a busy morning for the team. 46 people have been interviewed and many arrests have been made. We've made 12 arrests of which two were, uh, one was a failed asylum seeker, one was an overstayer, um, and the other ten were arrested on suspicion of illegal entry. Although the manager doesn't want to appear on camera, 
He is keen to prove he hired the men in good faith and carried out all the necessary checks. This is the employer's file where he's keeping all the details of his workforce. Um, and it looks like one of my colleagues has actually seized it, so we'll be taking this back to the office to run the checks that, for the people that we've arrested. An employer must check and keep copies of a worker's documents before hiring them. This helps to show they've done everything possible to follow the rules if later found to be employing an illegal worker. If, however, they are knowingly employing illegal workers or can't show that they took these necessary steps, they could be fined up to £10,000 per employee. What we're doing now is the people we've arrested have all gone out to the police stations. Um, the remaining officers here, we're all going to go and um, do the house searches now for the addresses of the people we have arrested. So I've got a small team here and we're going to go down and um, do two addresses and hopefully we can find some documents within. OK, all right, watch your head when you go in, mate. All right. OK. In order to remove the suspects from the country, the team need to verify their identities. The best way to do this is to search their homes and find their passports or any other form of identification. 200. What do we say, 202? They, uh, they didn't have keys for us, so it's a case of just knocking and um, as if anybody answers today. Oh, hello. Can we come in? You happy for us to come in? Yeah? OK. Huh? Happy to come, us to come in? Yeah. yeah. OK. So who lives here? Was it you and this gentleman here? Inside the house, the team encountered two men who were both foreign nationals and immediately admit to being in the UK illegally. He came, he came to look for work two years ago. And how did he enter the UK? OK, Turlock, you are now under arrest. You didn't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. The team have found more than they bargained for. Both men are arrested for entering the UK on the back of a lorry. Now their rooms can be searched too. OK, sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. OK. Where do you have any paperwork? No. OK, no problem. Myself and my colleague are going to look around. Yeah. OK, we'll ask you questions. No, please, I'll end on that. If you show us the paperwork, we don't need to look. The man claims to have no paperwork, so the team will have to search the entire room. Sometimes these things happen, we go to a home address and obviously we've got the power to come here because we've um, arrested the person. Um, they've provided this as their home address, their place of residence. So when we come back here, we've encountered another two working here. We've had a quick chat to them and found they're actually in the country illegally. So they've been arrested on suspicion, so we're now having a, a search through their room. Is this your bag? I put you in a bag. Is this your bag? Yes. Next door, the officers have forced entry to one of the bedrooms. So we've gained entry to this room. This is the room for the guy who was arrested down at the factory. I found all his pay slips, so we know we're in the right room. So hopefully, we'll um, we'll find a passport for him. Have you done all these, Paul? I haven't gone through the details. Oh, right. In the third bedroom, Officer Viv has found an asylum registration card which appears to give the owner the right to work in the UK. I mean, this, this particular one, um, it's got employment permitted, and from my phone call that my colleague made to the Home Office earlier on, there was no trace of this gentleman on Home Office records. So this card would appear to have not, not been issued by the, by the Home Office. This just found a counterfeit art card. Usually the art cards have got employment prohibited on them. You'll see on this one it's got employment permitted. So that always makes you have a second look anyway if it's got permitted on it, because very few of them do. But that, that, is a, that is a particularly bad one. And that's not all. It's Officer fantastic. Viv's also found a fake passport. Well, the gentleman first of all said he's an Indian national. It's, it seems that it's falling apart. And as you can see, 
there appears to be something yeah, else right, under, yeah. underneath. Yeah. It seems as though one page has been stuck on to another. Next door, the deception continues. Another national insurance card. Is it false or...? Say it's very moody. Yeah, he's he's, say, he's saying it's moody. He's saying it was supplied by a previous occupant. Oh, excellent! Well, in that as case, a false one. Full uh, seats uh, and CC paperwork. Fake passports and forged documents are flooding the UK from factories in Eastern Europe. Mr. Jim, do you want all of the papers? The officers have found plenty of fakes, but not the genuine passport they were looking for. Although the trail took an unexpected twist, the team have gathered enough evidence of deception to remove the men. These two arrests take the total to 15. The two men are both currently in detention. This man is also in detention and is awaiting removal from the UK back to India. This man claimed to be from Greece. He wasn't. He is also waiting to be removed back to India. The port of Calais northern France. For thousands of illegal immigrants travelling without documentation, this is known as the gateway to the UK. With over 20 million tonnes of freight being transported by ferry each day, the opportunities to hide in one of the thousands of trucks travelling to Britain are plentiful. The berths are where the lorries wait to board the ferry. It's the last chance for the teams to find stowaways before they reach the UK. It's a huge piece of machinery by the looks of it. Today, the team are searching a lorry of sports cars and have had a high reading on the CO2 monitors, the device used to detect human breath. Yeah, they are rich. All right, no problem. Yeah. Rubber tyres also emit CO2, which could explain the high reading. Therefore, such loads as these are a popular choice for people seeking a lorry to hide in. Charlie Delta's clear. You've got what, Charlie Delta's? We've got some. Guys, please take the plastic bags off your heads. Take the plastic bags off your heads. Take them off your heads. Health and safety. Good. Are you all well, though? You're yeah, excellent. How many have we got? We have ten Vietnamese nationals in plastic bags, mixed male and female. The CO2 probes are proved right, and ten Vietnamese people have been found beneath the cars. Okay, right, you just stand here for me. Just stand there. All right, you They've attempted to me. avoid detection by putting plastic bags over their heads. We don't know how long they've been in there. And they all was covered in black bags, covering their heads, as you could see from the footage you got. And um, we just wanted them to get them some air. Out here, they're, they're nice people, they're good, they're no trouble to us. They're going to be fine here. We'll just keep them here till we get um, the escort team down. They all put bags over their heads to stop the CO2 coming out. But the moment they take them off, all that CO2 is released into the trailer. Say 10 people do that at the same time, that's a lot of CO2 that all comes together. And you'll get this massive reading on your CO2. Some areas of Vietnam are considered to have an unsatisfactory human rights record by the Home Office. Vietnamese nationals are being detected in increasing numbers in Calais. Many have paid agents up to £20,000 hoping to achieve illegal entry to Great Britain. Ah, but you understand a little English? No, 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 no. I need everybody's name. This time they haven't made it across the channel, although they were just five minutes away from boarding the ferry. The group were later released by the French authorities and were free to try again. The lorry company was fined £4,000. The Deputy High Commission is the headquarters for the UK border agency in Lagos, Nigeria. Inside, Officer Phil Morgan is speaking to his manager, Dan Barker, about the visa application of this man. He claims he overstayed his last UK visa because his cousin accidentally took his passport back to Nigeria. I put it to him, there was no reason why his passport should have been stamped. It should have been his cousin's passport that was stamped. Correct. 
So I believe there's an attempt at deception here to show that he returned before his yes. visa conditions expired. Now, if we were to believe that his passport was brought back to Nigeria by mistake, his reason for staying the extra three to four months was that he applied for an emergency travel document from the Nigerian High Commission in London, and it took three months. Now, I believe those documents are issued within 24 or 48 hours. Okay. So I just don't find that credible either. And has he got a copy of that emergency travel document with him? I didn't actually ask that, so I can uh, ask him a few more uh, questions okay. if you wish. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Both Phil and Dan have their doubts, so this time Phil will confront the man about his police record. Do you still have your emergency travel document? No, they collect it at uh, the immigration office, and I have to stay five, five hours because I need to collect my passport back, and that was the only evidence to show I'm going on the passport. What did you do for the three months while you were waiting for this emergency travel uh, document to be issued? You can see I've grown belly now. I was feeding. What, you ate for 24 hours a day? <laughs> Sleeping, going around. They're monitoring my business here. OK. Have you been arrested and fingerprinted by the police in the UK? Myself? Hmm. Over what? I'm asking you. Ah, uh, not, not that I can remember. Yeah, except for driving with my international license, yeah. So you have been? Yes. When was this? I can't remember. It's been a long time. I can't remember. It should be four, four years. When you were arrested by the police, what name did you give them? My name, Adib Adibayo. Well, I have evidence that you gave a different name. Can I know the name they told me and they said I gave? Yes. Yes, please. Yeah. It's Adiweli. Adibayo. No, Adiweli. They misquote it then? No. I have the police record and that's the name you gave them. And also, you, what is your date of birth? 1904, 1960. 1960? Yes, please. Why did 1964, you... sorry. Well, again, I have evidence that you gave the police in the UK your date of birth is the 25th of September, 1975. No, that's not me. That's not me. Well, they're your fingerprints that the police took, and that's the name you gave them. No, I'm sure I gave them my name, I did buy my correct date of birth. But it has never changed. Okay. And what was, why did the uh, police arrest you? What happened was I used the extra small tire. Oh, the emergency the, tire, yeah? The emergency tire. And I was arrested because of that. That's fine, thank you very much. If you'd just like to wait outside again, please. Thank you. It's the end of the interview and the man has failed to explain his deception. So, plans are obviously to refuse for use of deception from <clears throat> obtaining a stamp by deception, which appears genuine. I, I believe it is genuine. Um, and we'll obviously refuse him and refer him to the police. Indeed. Right, I've referred your application to the entry clearance manager and your visa application has been refused. The reason it's been refused is that at the time you were arrested by the police, you gave a different name and date of birth from that in your passport. Also, you overstayed in the United Kingdom by more than 28 days. Yeah, but that was, that was intentional, I explained that. No, but that you should have attempted to regularise your position, uh, your status in the UK. No. Having no. realised that your visa had expired and that you were in the UK illegally. Anyway, that's a copy for you with your appeal papers, OK? Yeah. Can um, I have the gentleman over there will give you back the documents and your passport, OK? okay. Thank you. Thank you. The gentleman holding his passport is Inspector Lawal of the Lagos Fraud Unit. He was taken away for further questioning, but released without charge the same afternoon. 
The farmer has failed to get his UK visa, but each year around 60,000 genuine visitors make it to the UK from Lagos. The post of UK border agency officer in Lagos can be a dangerous one. Expatriates and Western-based companies have been the targets of kidnapping. Sarah Pownell is an immigration liaison manager. Unlike her colleagues in Lagos, Sarah travels to work in a bulletproof armor-plated car. It, it can be a bit sort of living in a bit of a pressure cooker at times when you, you just want some, some independence and freedom, but um, most of the time everybody gets on and you, you accept all the security measures that are in place to look after you. Unfortunately, about 18 months ago, one of our drivers was shot and killed on, on duty on his way on, onto the, the mainland. And um, so we, we do take security very strongly at the High Commission. Sarah is based at the Deputy High Commission, but spends most of her week traveling to and from Matala Mohammed Airport. Morning. Hey, Joe, how, how are you? I'm fine. Good. No wahala. No wahala today. No, no, no wahala. Okay. Sarah doesn't have any legal powers at the airport. It's her job to advise airline staff on how to spot people trying to enter the UK illegally. We provide the training to the airlines so that they can do the job on their own. We don't have to stand here and do the job for them. We're here just as an ad advisor to the airlines to explain maybe some of these technical difficulties, inform them of any current trends with the different types of forgeries, different types of counterfeit documents. But anyone who does arrive in the UK who doesn't have the correct visa, who doesn't have the correct paperwork in, in whatever shape or form, the airline will be fined £2,000, which is a hefty load for the airline to face. So it's, it's in their interests, obviously, to work with us and ensuring that the, everybody's got the right documentation. Over five million people travel through Mutala Mohammed Airport every year. Let's see who we've got then. Okay. At the boarding gate, the passengers are given a final check. This is the last chance to spot imposters before they reach the UK. These bits and pieces. Just show your boarding pass at the guys here. We're not taking Arsenal supporters today, I'm afraid. <laughs> this is a Liverpool zone, okay? So no Arsenal supporter. No. Arsenal Sarah supporters. has been asked by the airline staff to look at a woman's visa. The woman does not want to be identified. Morning, madam. How are you? Okay. What's your final destination today? No, today. Today? Well, today, London. Okay. Because I'm going to the US tomorrow. You're going to the US tomorrow, okay. Have you been to the US before? Yes, a long time. Okay, approximately when? 1975. 1975, okay. When you went for your American visa, did you tell the visa officer that you were pregnant? No. You didn't? No. Okay. Is there any reason why you didn't tell the visa officer that you're pregnant? It didn't come up. It didn't come up. Okay, what I'm going to do is... The woman is only seven weeks away from giving birth, yet has decided to visit her sister in America, claiming she will return three weeks before her due date. It says that you're fit to travel. Babies born in the UK don't automatically qualify for a British passport, but babies born in the US do automatically qualify for an American passport. So it's quite common for pregnant ladies to travel overseas so that they can have the baby in whichever country to automatically get that passport. Sarah is suspicious of the woman's motive for travelling to the US via the UK, but she could also be in breach of airline regulations for travelling whilst pregnant. When is she due? 5th of June. When is her return? 16th of May. So she's got three weeks between her return date and her due date, which makes her 37 weeks pregnant, which is over every airline's limit. The whole policy on how advanced you can be yeah. for travel is different on each airline. I was I mean, going to say, I can't remember what yours yeah. is yeah. for your airline. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about 33 or 34. Yeah, 32. Exactly, yeah. Well, her letter says 33, so she's already because, over that. Yeah, because she so was, when she's coming she, back, again on your airline, yeah. she'll be 37 she, yeah, she'll weeks. Be exactly. The woman is in breach of the airline's policy, but as she has a valid US visa, Sarah must now contact the US Embassy. 
Hi, um, it's Sarah. I'm at the airport at the moment. Um, I just wondered if you could give a call to the American Embassy so that they can check an American visa for me. She's at the airport today um, and she's in an advanced state of pregnancy. So if you can just give them a call and find out if they're happy with that. And if so, then we can let her travel. Sarah now has to wait for a reply from the US Embassy, but the flight leaves in 10 minutes. The decision to question the woman in the first place came from the airline, but Sarah's presence has become the focus of the woman's frustration. That's my own point. I don't understand why you are doing Explain your, your job point. at the immigration. It's the immigration people that will either tell you yes, okay or not. They will so tell why you. Are you the one stopping me at this point? Because your flight here is going directly to the UK. You didn't choose Delta to go directly to the States. And this is why I'm on duty here, to see the people who are travelling through the UK. It's minutes before the flight leaves, but whether or not the pregnant woman will be on board is up to the US Embassy. Right, OK, OK, all right, I'll do that then. OK, thanks very much. All right, thank you, bye-bye. OK, uh, that was the American Embassy, and they want to speak to her today. The flight will be leaving without the pregnant woman. Now Sarah must tell her the news. So what I've done is I've contacted the visa man and explained your situation. What he'd like to do is, if you, can you go back to the embassy here in Lagos, show him all this paperwork, and he'll want to speak to you. I'm sorry, I know it's frustrating, but if you can go back to him, Sanchez, because, please, Madame, please, Madame, please, please, I'm begging, please. No, please don't beg me. Please, please, please don't begging, beg me. Begging. No, Madame, please because don't I beg me. That are that you go and all that. The pregnant woman did not make it to the USA. When she failed to turn up at the American embassy, her visa was canceled. Back in Calais, Bridget and the response team have received a call from a crew on the other side of the port requiring urgent assistance. Yankee 1, this is Charlie 3. Ahead. Just to let you know that we're en route to uh, lane 173 to Georgia. Okay. Richard and Bridget work alongside the newly formed Calais response team. What we're going to is, is lane 173, down at the berth area, where one of our teams has uh, radioed up to say that they have a lorry down here that uh, is full of illegals. So we're going to be responding to it. Paddy, good. Yeah. There's at least 25, they think, in tyres. But big tyres, big, big tyres. They've no idea how many people are inside, and judging by the size of the load, it's not going to be an easy search. Okay, then there's two officers inside, so if we go up this side, help with the uh, searching of the tyres, and the front has still got to be searched as well. Right, there's a seal on that one. There was a seal on the back, the driver was on there. I am Mark's inspected the seal, it wasn't sealed properly. Entered the vehicle at the rear, unable to visually check the vehicle, but there was, was a smell, there was a possible entrance of illegals. Took the side curtain off, looked in these two sets of tyres, found a group of ten in the first group, second set of tyres, another nine or ten people. Eight in there. Yep, five in there. Gary found five in the other, in the other set of tyres. We've got to check the rest yet. And this, there was, what, two or three down the side there as well. The lorry is carrying large tyres for agricultural vehicles. It's a dangerous load to hide in, and the first priority is to get the people out safely. OK, we can start getting them out one at a time, man. I'll get the bottom ones out first. Keep away, good man. Yeah, you can pull it back more now. Just because we're going to pull the curtain back, is that OK? We don't want you to fall out. Hey, be careful as well. One of them's smoking in here. Because there were so many in the middle, some of them have actually laid in these tyres along here. There's quite a lot of space in there. So we'll have to ch check when everyone's out. Just check all the tyres, just make sure there's still another lane in there. One minute. We've just got to wait for someone to come again. this way for me. You got your stuff? Excellent. Oh, watch it to the side. Get back in. Come on, Vanna, do that. Come on, Vanna, do that. Come on, Vanna, do that. Are they all uh, Vietnamese? All Vietnamese. Yeah. You need to find method of entry. Oh, there was no security at all? The seal was in. Oh, 
But it the wasn't. Was there, but it, the seal wasn't locked. Right. OK. The stowaways are all Vietnamese. They are the third most encountered nationality at Calais behind Eritreans and Afghans. Just watch over the traffic, yeah? No, one minute, one minute, one minute. Good man, one minute. Where's your shoes? Oh, down there? I don't know why they took the shoes off, but they did. <laughs> they were all in here, ten of them. They might have been on top of each other's head. So that may be why they took the shoes off. It's only a guess. Sorry? Him there, yeah. It's like the last one of the eight, isn't it? So that's 16, yeah, so far. We've got at least another six, so we're going to be upwards of 20. They're all carrying the plastic bags, and, and this is what they uh, put over their heads. The Vietnamese are so desperate to come to Britain that they cover their heads with plastic bags to evade the detection of the CO2 monitors. I'll make it 24. 24, including him. Five females. Age, how old are you? Your age? None of them are carrying documents. These men and women are anonymous and completely untraceable. All the crew can do is ask them for their name, date of birth, and where they boarded the lorry. 21. And you're Vietnamese? They all stay together. The gentlemen always look after the ladies, so again, they'll be very protective of them. And we had one English speaker, which was great, so we've got all the details that we needed. Great find, though, for CRF, great find. In total, 24 Vietnamese people were found hiding in the lorry and handed over to the French authorities. The driver was eventually fined £2,400. <laughs> 